Welcome everyone to a special episode of Signs, Planets, and Stellar Rhythms. This is a episode that is going to focus on the astrological happenings of the year 2021, which we are at the uh, cusp of at the time of this recording. Uh, so what are the planets up to? Um, my name is Eric Roth. I'm a shamanic astrologer and still at this, as of this moment anyway, still the managing director of SAMS that actually is going to, uh, I'm no longer going to be the managing director in, a, in the next couple of weeks. I'm passing the torch on to another at the Shamanic Astrology Mystery School, but I'll still be involved in uh, other activities with the school. So you'll, for those that are tuning in here, you'll still see my name pop up in, in relationship to the school and in, in the future, 2021 and beyond. But um, yeah, 2021, this is definitely a, uh, uh, another big year, uh, different uh, character, different personality than what we experienced in 2020. And I'll be going into that uh, as we get in, uh, as we go into the, the months ahead. One thing I'll just prepare everyone, this is a longer, much longer format than what I normally do in the, you know, anywhere from the 30 to 45 minute range. Uh, so this is going to go uh, maybe an hour or a little bit more than that. Um, but I'm, I'm not going to hit on every single thing that's going to, astrologically speaking, uh, take place in 2021. But I'm going to hit all the major highlights and some other interesting um, uh, facts and things that are coming out that we're moving into in this, in this new period. So why don't we uh, take this moment and have an acknowledgement and honor, uh, honor the stars, the planets, our relationship, and all our relations to creation self, to the three worlds, the underworld, the celestial world, and our current reality, this middle world or terrestrial world. We are part of this cosmic creation, a cauldron of co-creation at this time. And we are breathing in the air, um, drinking the water of this a special uh, time period. Um, and at this time, we're also uh, connecting to uh, the relationship, the astrological rhythms, when the planets, moon and sun and all that is, all that has come before us and all that will come after us. And we are tuned in, we are in rhythm. And we will begin. Thank you very much. I'm grateful just to be part of this uh, co-creation. Uh, and I, I thank all that is here. All right, here are the highlights, the major highlights that I'm gonna be talking about in this video. And you feel free again to maybe watch it in segments uh, since it is a, uh, a longer video. Uh, also in the future, if you're watching this, and you like what, I, what you are seeing here, feel free to subscribe to my channel and then you get, that way you'll get notifications um, uh, through YouTube. And uh, also in my newsletter, I have it um, available at spiralnexus.com. And uh, feel free to go into that um, and so that you can get these uh, free updates about what's going on cosmically and uh, how it relates to all of us here on this planet. Okay. So 2021, we are, as most that have been watching my channel and, and tuned in astrologically or just even sometimes cursory, you know that Aquarius is a big thing happening right now. And this is due to the recent Saturn-Jupiter conjunction in Aquarius on the December solstice, winter here in the Northern Hemisphere and uh, summer in the Southern Hemisphere. And so uh, this theme is continuing into 2021 in a very big way. I'll be highlighting uh, the reasons why. Eclipse season, so I'll be talking about the four eclipses that take place in 2021. The three Uranus Saturn squares, which is the, I look at as the primary theme of 2021. Uh, Mars Uranus conjunction that takes place on the, the date of the, uh, Joe Biden's inauguration here in the United States. Uh, there's a couple more Pluto Eris squares 
that are happening. Uh, I'll be talking about the relationship between Neptune, Vesta, and the lunar nodes. There's uh, special aspects that are that have started this that started in late 2020 and are going on through uh, 2021. That'll be part of this theme that we're all in. I'll be highlighting the Mercury retrogrades. There's three of them in 2021. Uh, there is a Venus-Mars conjunction. Uh, last year, there uh, wasn't a uh, Venus-Mars conjunction. So now we're, uh, we're connecting into that, um, into that space. So uh, in, uh, also at the end of this year, uh, Venus, uh, uh, end of 2021, uh, Venus stations retrograde and it, that station of retrograde is only one degree away from uh, dwarf planet Pluto. So that is really um, particularly uh, auspicious as they say uh, in ast astrological language. It's definitely very uh, uh, interesting to note that. And I will comment and uh, put, put a few minutes in about the Pluto return for the US during its Neptune opposition. That by itself, I mean, some of these things uh, can be a video all on its own, such as the Saturn Uranus squares, uh, the Pluto return for the US and um, Mercury retrogrades, for example, all of those could be uh, all videos, just standalone videos all on their own which I could be creating uh, possibly in writing or, and or also video. So stay tuned for that. Okay, so in the previous video that I did uh, in an early part of December, I talked about the Saturn and Jupiter conjunction on the solstice. And that took place on just about a half a degree into the sign of Aquarius, not the constellation, but the sign. I wanna also comment that I don't see this as specifically the reason why we're in the so-called age of Aquarius. This is, this is not that, but we are in a major transition of a, of a new age and the end of a, you know, an old, a beginning of a new age and, and the end of an older age. So um, this, you know, whatever we want to label that, um, the, there's a little bit of a misnomer around the quote age of Aquarius in that uh, we think some think that it has already begun, but the, you know, if we measured it on the uh, position of the vernal equinox, uh, spring equinox, or uh, in, uh, if we look at this on a global level, uh, a March equinox, it's still in the constellation of the fish. So it's still in that space um, which could be, you know, something I could do a larger video on, but so we're not, as far as astrologically is concerned, that's still in that space, but the constellations, each of them, you know, they're all uneven and they, they occupy different sizes across the sky, different areas, different regions. Um, so it's not a uniform. And, um, but we are in a transition, a major transition. There are other measurements to use such as what's happened with um, the, um, in 1998 when the solstice point and the sun went, went into the center of that, um, uh, the galactic center and the solstice and they were lined up and that was looked at as one measurement of the, of the great turning of the ages. And that's the center point of, of a, could be especially a multi-decade time period, but one could use a, you know, more than that, a century and a half roughly of time to, to look at this broader range because it takes 72 years to uh, the precession of the equinox to move one degree. Again, some of this terminology you may not be familiar with. Um, you may want to look that up on, uh, you know, do a search on that, um, but it has to do with the wobble of the earth. Uh, and there's you know, some other factors into uh, how, what points to look at in the sky to determine that over a long period of time. Okay, so that sidebar, I will, we could file away for later, but we are, regardless of what we call this, we are in a turning of the ages. We are in a time of uh, incredible change. And when we're in that time, there's a lot of uh, tumultuous uh, happenings, events beyond our control, uh, you know, transformation of systems and structures, uh, death and rebirth, uh, all of that is happening at a more rapid pace than would otherwise be. 
And so this is, this is definitely, 2020 was definitely one of those critical years in this uh, longer time period for that to take place. Uh, there, you know, we can, I'll talk more about, a little bit more about this when I got talk about the Pluto return of the US, uh, but those are some of the things. Now, Aquarius is a major theme for 2021. And so this was a really big deal for Saturn and Jupiter. Uh, to come into a conjunction uh, during this time. As you can see here, it's, um, it's, it's right between the archer and the goatfish constellations here to differentiate that from the signs. It's not the, these are not the signs of Capricorn and, um, and Sagittarius. These are the constellations. So this area where, set, where you see Saturn and Jupiter right here, uh, back on December 21st, this was the border between the sign of Capricorn and the sign of Aquarius. All right, so uh, the conjunction took place. Uh, it was the, the closest conjunction uh, nearest the December solstice since uh, for about 417 years. Um, that took place in uh, the sign of Sagittarius. Uh, the conjunction that took uh, Saturn Jupiter conjunction took place then. Um, it won't happen. Uh, close to the December solstice again until it gets to the year 2159. So this is a really rare uh, occurrence and especially as close as it's been. Um, we haven't had a Saturn Jupiter conjunction in the sign of Aquarius for about 600 years. And um, that happened uh, four times previously in the last uh, thousand years. And it was, it was grouped in uh, 2020, uh, 1226, 1285, 1345, and 1405. And actually that 1285 number is a, uh, a really important uh, uh, year uh, in the astrological history here. So we're now really more fully into the air signs where every 20 years, Saturn and Jupiter move into conjunction and uh, you get to experience the um, uh, the, the lights and, and the sky where they either come really close or they look like they have uh, the Saturn and Jupiter have merged their lights together, which happened here. That was, uh, I didn't get to see it on the day of the solstice, but I saw it two days before and two days after. And it was uh, really remarkable how close those two uh, lights in the sky were as they, uh, as they moved. Okay, so what does, uh, let's just, this is the topic of kind of setting the table for this another uh, part. And I'm, I'm, I'm uh, you know, using this as a form of continuity with the last video a bit as we get into 2021. This is a uh, Saturn is an agent for growth through limits and boundaries and shedding our skin. And Jupiter expands that which it touches and it connects us to our greater expansive vision quest path. And all of this is taking place in the sign of Aquarius. So this is, you know, where we uh, we can plant this, continue to plant the seeds for innovation, technological and spiritual breakthroughs, uh, you know, humanitarianism, uh, expansion of consciousness. Um, you know, these sound all like really beneficial things, but it all depends on how those are used, of course. So it can give us though an idea and intent uh, to have this cosmic view of being able to see the wider picture, the whole picture as an eagle would, or, or say, as you would from looking on the globe from, from orbit, you know, we get this wider uh, view of what the situation is and can see all the, all the pieces. And this is, this is what I feel like you know, we've been in the crisis of, that we've been in in 2020, where we were really thick and, as they say, in the forest. But there were a lot of, uh, uh, I think, amazing uh, things that took place in 2020 that it wasn't just, as it's been described by others, uh, a dumpster fire. Uh, but there, there have been some uh, uh, real uh, transformation that's taken place and a greater awareness of what, you know, specifically, the seeds that are being planted for the long for long term future growth, especially in the sign of Capricorn here. Um, this is Saturn and Jupiter are moving away from uh, they're uh, distancing themselves away from the planet Pluto, and that is also going to help um, us uh, 
get more focused on what those planets are representing for us in this um, in this year, in this uh, calendar year of 2021. Um, there's a couple of um, hard aspects between uh, Mars and Saturn and Jupiter, the last of the three that it's had. It had two each in uh, with Jupiter and, Sa and Saturn. So on January 13th, uh, Mars squares Saturn at uh, three degrees, four minutes, uh, while Mars is in the sign of Taurus and Saturn and Aquarius. And then Mars squares Jupiter about a week later on January, January 22nd, just two days after the inauguration at uh, almost eight degrees um, uh, Taurus slash Aquarius, Mars again in Taurus. Mars having traveled six and a half months through the sign of Aries now uh, spends just a couple of months in the sign of Taurus. And that's, it's, it's gonna have a, a, a certain relationship with Uranus and Saturn and Jupiter also as it uh, continues through uh, 2021. So these are activations points. So January, uh, as, we, as we open up, I do feel that uh, Aquarius energy is, is gonna be very strongly uh, uh, experienced by humanity and all of us um, and in the form of, you know, again, expanding one's consciousness, uh, perhaps uh, actional breakthroughs of the technological nature as well as spiritual awakening. This uh, more and more people are coming into uh, a space where they're being able to, you know, through the passage of 2020, now we're coming into a space where maybe we'll be able to see and connect more with our own uh, relationship with the cosmos on a, on a spiritual level, on a on a heart centered level. So we will um, we will see how how that uh, how that flies as this as this moves on. Okay, so there's also um, two more Pluto Eris squares. So these take place on August 27th and October 8th of 2021. Um, Eris is a, a very slow moving dwarf planet. It's, it's, it's got a length of orbit that is more than twice that of Pluto. So it's way out in the, uh, what is astronomers call the Kuiper Belt, K-U-I-P-E-R, uh, Kuiper Belt. Uh, Eris represents the, the Greek goddess of strife and discord, and the Romans called her Discordia. She's a sister to Eris, uh, Eris, Ares. A-R-E-S, not the, specifically the sign of, of Aries, but, um, but she symbolizes, uh, Aries symbolizes certain levels of chaos and trouble for humanity and projected by those at the time. Aries was the one that initiated the Trojan War and the Golden Apple, but this was a projection of the Olympic gods at the time, uh, a projection into who she was, but she was something that uh, was much more if uh, she had a she was independent and sovereign and she was strong willed and highly intelligent and so there was a certain you might say jealousy around that and so uh, they tended to uh, exclude her from a lot of things and so that's in some ways uh, she taught them a, a, a very powerful lesson uh, when uh, she helped initiate the Trojan War. So Eris can be also seen like in, in, in a modern time, it could be seen as a disruptor and a change agent for societies and civilizations, assisting us to uncover our own internal and external conflicts, shadows and disharmonies. And working with Pluto in squares, this has also been one of the, uh, the things about 2020, because there were uh, three of those squares uh, last year um, and in 2020. And so now we get to the experience to see the two more that, that take place uh, in 2021. So that's been part of uh, the, the shadow that has been dug up, the, uh, you know, brought to attention um, of the underworld, uh, the underworld, not just in the United States, but across the world uh, and, um, especially triggering Capricorn energy and the systems and structures that have uh, been really taken to task with some being overwhelmed and others real, uh, showing their 
their great vulnerabilities of things that we need to, uh, uh, you know, put a great deal of attention upon and um, uh, rebuild, revamp, uh, reconstitute in some fashion that is in more harmony with humanity, uh, economic, health systems, educational systems, uh, and social systems. And that we cannot, this is not a time to, uh, to uh, look away or throw uh, sweep things under the carpet, but a time to actually show up and, and uh, face it, face the truth, face our shadow. Uh, and there's more on this I'll talk about with Pluto um, and later in this video, but this is really a, a part that's the, the end of that theme is in 2021 here with, uh, at least with, as far as Eris is involved. So we'll get to, um, we'll get to experience some after effects of that, um, uh, of that 2020 alignment through this, uh, these two squares that are taking place August 27 and October 8th. All right, so the, what I've wrote here about Eris having three conjunctions with Mars, it's actually three conjunctions with Mars in 2020. Uh, so that ended, uh, the last of those conjunctions took place in on December 22nd. So just a, just a day after the solstice. So we can see in, in uh, you know, at the, at the as this recording here at the last day, December 31st, 2020, and still we're getting this last huge surge of COVID-19 cases and uh, deaths. This is, you can see the, you know, what has uh, brought, you know, might say what our experience with this is and how, uh, how we've reacted to this and just the overload of this. But yet at the same time, we're having some breakthroughs in Aquarius with um, better treatments, vaccines, and either and other breakthroughs in science and, um, uh, you know, insights and in community about how we knowledge um, that we had, we didn't have, uh, you know, back in March of 2020. So that to me is, uh, you know, can be really beneficial and can help propel us uh, forward into, into the future. All right, so the, main, the primary theme of 2021 was this Saturn Uranus square. There's three of them, February 17th, June 14th, and December 23rd of 2021. And when I say those exact dates, um, it isn't just the date that, the only date that's really important. They, these two planets are relatively slow moving. And so if you measure this um, at least a week before and a week after, all of February, all of nearly all of June and uh, much of December, are you might say those critical months where uh, Saturn and Uranus have you know sort of this, this stronger relationship and a square is like a tension. There's a uh, two think of it as two walls leaning up against each other and then at some point something gives and energy is released and perhaps the walls fall over or they get stabilized um, in some fashion. So. This is Aquarius and Taurus um, are, and I'm gonna talk about some of this as I get into the next slide, but um, the, the last times that uh, Saturn and Uranus did a, uh, uh, a square or any kind of relationship like this, um, it's been a really, it's been a long time. So uh, Saturn gets to spend its first full year in a sign of Aquarius with Jupiter, uh, first time since 1405. The overall pattern of this alignment, this is including Pluto. This is something I want to stress also, perhaps in a future video, but it, it more closely resembles the pattern of 1285 to 1286, when Jupiter and Saturn began the transition from Capricorn to Aquarius, and Pluto was in conjunction with those planets in 1285. This is a, a repeat. So this is uh, over 700 years later um, that this is now repeating itself. Um, so at that time also, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto were in opposition to Uranus. And Uranus was in the sign of Leo instead of Taurus. So there's, um, 
you know, there is a, uh, as far as a hard aspect goes, it's in, it's in that category of, you know, a really important aspect to look at that creates change. And during that time, it was the end of the Crusades, 1285, 1286, uh, the, you know, certain European, uh, uh, you know, systems and structures were breaking down, especially the ones that they had uh, initiated in the, what, what is called the Holy Land in the Middle East. Uh, those, those were recaptured by the Islamic peoples um, and they collapsed just to, uh, completely, completely taken over by the Islamic peoples in um, just a few years later after that, after the 1285-86 period. Um, also, the, there was a new height to uh, the Mongol uh, invasion, which had started decades before and it's now it's now in a place where uh, you know where East, some of Eastern Europe was was captured. So you can see Europe is going through a transformation. It was in the High Middle Ages, and there was a you know uh, certain uh, certain historians look at this as a sort of a decline at part. Um, and there were things that happened after this alignment and into the when we get to the 14th century and 15th century that you know, completely changed everything uh, that uh, Europe and, and the world entered into a new, a new phase. So this was, a, it was kind of the shot across the bow of, of the, uh, of, of some uh, incredible change that would take place um, uh, years later as well. So I've listed these. Now, it's interesting that Saturn and Uranus have a, uh, there's a time where they almost have a fourth square and this can happen sometimes with your Saturn and Uranus. Uh, this in 2022, Saturn and Uranus are also close together. They're not as, as close together as they of course are in 2021, but they almost get to another a fourth square in the fall of uh, September, October of 2022. So stay tuned for more information, just like in, as, we, as we go into 2021 and we experience what that has to offer, you know, we get to see what uh, what is being um, uh, uh, seeded here for the long term future. So, let's describe what Saturn and Uranus mean. So, this is Saturn growth through limits and boundaries, meeting Uranus, unpredictable, unexpected events of great novelty. I come from the language of shamanic astrologies. I talk about all of this. So. Um, this is the sign of Aquarius merging with the irrational necessity and breakthroughs in technology and consciousness spirituality through the sign of Taurus. So Uranus represents the cosmic sky viewpoint and a Promethean rebelliousness seed point against authority and traditional structures. Saturn brings in a sense of rules, laws, and inherent function of structures and systems. This theme of 2021 could point to more revolutionary structures being forged and breakthroughs in humanity's quest for earth sky harmony. Um, this is a really a, um, it's like Saturn Uranus to some degree uh, have an antithesis with each other uh, in, in the same vein that say Neptune was in the form and what Neptune brings in the, in, in the um, experience or quality of formlessness. But Uranus is more of the out of control, um, you know, uh, being able to, to be unpredictable, whereas Saturn is more about control, more about, you know, guiding things diligently um, with, uh, with rationality and uh, resources. And Uranus is throwing it all out the window and, and especially the rules and going with more of a different kind of knowledge, a cosmic knowledge that's more irrational, but yet still helps create breakthroughs and, and, and uh, create, um, you know, one could call it progress, but more like a certain necessity for human evolution. So this is, I believe something, something here, something really strong here is being forged uh, beyond what we had in 2020. Uh, there's a certain uh, acceleration of, uh, you might say innovation that could take place, especially in our relationship to the environment and to technology and maybe having that be of support 
to, you know, when it comes to the, to, to reacting and connecting with what climate change is bringing in. Um, I talk some about this in the video that I did on Vesta and Virgo and um, uh, Vesta's relationship with Saturn and how Vesta's Virgo's transit is um, uh, in its, uh, at the same time that Saturn is in Aquarius, there's a certain environmental uh, theme around it. So I do believe that, that that particular crisis that's been ongoing for many years is taking on a new, a new um, uh, feel to it, at least a new wave of reacting to this. So we may experience uh, a repurposing. And um, now that we've kind of gone through some, uh, some really powerful headwinds, and uh, perhaps we're going to get some, uh, so there was a little bit of wind at our back as we go forward into uh, 2021. This doesn't mean that uh, the, the, the COVID-19 thing just becomes a, a distant memory. We still have a lot to clean up there. There's, there's, there's still, um, uh, you know, uh, still processes and this powerful initiation that we're going through, humanity is still going through. And the winter of 2021 is, is still gonna be uh, extremely challenging for humanity. But I do get the sense that spring and summer, especially summer, we're gonna really get into where things are gonna feel more open and free. Okay, so Saturn Uranus. So here's some previous times where there were some hard aspects, oppositions, conjunctions, and squares in the 20th and 21st century. This pattern takes place roughly at about an eight to 10 year cycle. Um, what's interesting is the last time that they had a hard aspect was in the 20, 2008 to 2010. And that was the time when we had the economic breakdown and the housing market collapsed. Uh, but it was also the time that Pluto moved into Capricorn, the sign of Capricorn in 2008. But they were, uh, Saturn was in the sign of Virgo and Uranus was in the sign of Pisces. And that was in, op these were oppositions. And then uh, before that was 1999 to 20 to 2000. And uh, that was the sort of the dot-com boom like the, at, the, at the maximum point. And we felt, uh, uh, you know, we're, uh, so-called entering the new millennia, although by mathematical, you know, uh, you know, as it comes to calendrical means, it's it's actually technically 2001. But at that time, it was it was reversed than what it is coming up in 2021. Saturn was in the sign of Taurus, and Uranus was in the sign of Aquarius. So they were they're flipped in those two different signs now. So this is just, uh, this is really fascinating. So I think that there is definitely some element from the 99 to 2000 period that we are going to experience here, that there could be this, um, you know, that was like that really the internet was hitting an all time, a new all time high, but there was also, um, you know, a presidential uh, con um, uh, scandal, uh, Clinton and, uh, and uh, Monica Lewinsky. Um, and that was just the time, you know, we had the, uh, the 2000 election and the, uh, the Florida votes and, and the Supreme Court decision around that. So this is, this is, there's some, there's some echoes there of that time period. Just fairly fascinating to see that. 1988, when the last time that Saturn and Jupiter were, Saturn and, um, sorry, Saturn and Uranus were conjunct. Uh, that happened in uh, primarily uh, Sagittarius, but it, you know, it kind of was on the border of Sagittarius and Capricorn, the latter degrees of Sagittarius, right, right around the, uh, the galactic center uh, in the sky. So I just, that's a, a real powerful point. That was with the time when um, uh, Ronald Reagan uh, got elected here in the United States, and uh, we were and Trina Fey, oh, sorry, not Ronald Reagan, George, uh, George W. Bush's father, but Ronald Reagan was still president. And we were entering the time where the Cold War between the US or the West and uh, Russia and the Soviets were coming, were starting to ebb. That was like the beginning stages where, um, uh, you know, Glasnost was in force and things were starting to ebb. 75 to 77, 1975 to 70, 1977, uh, also squares, um, 
Leo, Saturn was in Leo and uh, Uranus was in the sign of Scorpio. And that was, you know, there was definitely uh, also a period of, of, of oil crisis. The end of the Vietnam War uh, was in 75 officially. And so a new, uh, a new time period for, for the world was uh, coming into form uh, and the rise, especially the rise of the, uh, of the Middle East as a uh, much larger situation that was gonna carry many decades later. Um, and then we get to 65, 66, which was at the, this point of, of great revolution, um, uh, turmoil and um, you know, breakthroughs in technology and uh, innovation, um, but also uh, you know, civil rights as well. Uh, Uranus was in the sign of Virgo and Saturn in the sign of Pisces. And that decade of the 60s, especially 63 through 69, was, has some significant uh, uh, you know, signatures that play into what has taken place since really 2008 into, into this now, this coming um, uh, into 2020. So we are, we're experiencing something in that space, uh, especially when it comes to revolution and transformation of structures and systems and our whole um, experience with earth um, and what, how, we, how we feel about it, how our, our relationship is with it. It's definitely a revolution around that. And that is still now taking on a new, uh, a new territory. Okay, so one of the first big things in 2021 is this ina inauguration date. Um, is this something that I'm, uh, I was intending to do a uh, co-create a video with, with Caitlin Castell, but we've had some scheduling challenges. And so I just wanna mention a few points here. Uh, this is, there's a Mars-Uranus conjunction on this date at six degrees, 44 Taurus. Only, only really, uh, at the time of the inauguration, 12 p.m., it's almost exact. And Mars is an activator. Mars is an activator. It, it tends to create action, tends to flip a switch. And so being in conjunction with Uranus, this could create some, some wild uh, and or unpredictable situations. Maybe not specifically on that day. It could happen either the days before leading up to it or the days after. So this is something to be, be aware of. But I, I do see there's some balance here a little bit with uh, because there is a uh, this Mars Uranus conjunction here squares Jupiter and Saturn in Aquarius. And at the moment of the um, uh, inauguration in Washington, D.C., there's a Taurus ascendant at that time. Um, so, and then the moon ingresses into the sign of Taurus about two o'clock Eastern. So we're, we're seeing like a huge, uh, yeah, Aquarius Taurus, uh, archetype blending and alchemy, alchemization happening in January. And that's going to carry into February as well. Uh, and so this is something to be connected to something along the same lines as I've been talking about. And uh, with the Saturn Uranus square, just in those situations, just in those events, this is part of that uh, that energy. And um, so Joe Biden will become president, but there is there's something that is carried into the you might say the Oval Office of the White House or and into the new Congress as something really uh, as something fairly dramatic and game changing as we go through 2021. So here's the chart of uh, the inauguration. Um, as you can see here, a lot of what I was talking about circled in these two areas here on the chart. Uh, you can see this is uh, takes place Washington DC at 12 p.m. Uh, Eastern time, Eastern Standard Time. You can see the moon only uh, a couple hours away from moving into the sign of Taurus. And the sun has uh, just also only one day before moved into the sign of Aquarius. So you can see all of this um, uh, squaring each other, huge concentration. So there's a certain, um, I, I, there could even be, 
uh, you know, maybe on a, um, uh, what we call a, um, more of a, been a, like what could be the highest good here uh, of the outcome? It could be a process of enlightenment that takes place. It could be a process of, of transformational enlightenment and breakthroughs of, you know, being able to, to, to finally have the courage to, to take the stand and to uh, speak that, that um, you know, broader truth, cosmic truth to come through. Uh, so this is maybe a uh, one, uh, one version of how that can uh, play out. There's also that there could be some unexpected uh, uh, issues associated with the inauguration and uh, leading up to it and, and afterwards that uh, create some uh, challenges for uh, the administration uh, and the country. Um, so we'll get, to, we'll get to experience that as uh, really only a few weeks from the time of this recording. Um, the one that closely resembles this, uh, this inauguration is uh, the 2001 inauguration of George um, W. Bush. Um, Saturn was in Taurus and it had a uh, loose square with Uranus and Aquarius and Jupiter was only seven degrees away from Saturn, but Jupiter was in Gemini at the time. But still there is a, there's definitely a, con a connection there. Mars was in, in the picture at that point with the relationship there, but it was certainly something um, uh, that uh, bore uh, fruit down the road. And what, you know, the, the kind of presidency that George W. Bush had with, you know, uh, nine months later having 9-11 uh, take place and starting an entirely uh, new uh, set of uh, uh, systems and things into motion, including the Department of Homeland Security and the war on terror. Okay, so here's some prior um, inaugurations. There's some inaugurations that uh, I find that actually uh, also have connections to this time in which we're living um, is uh, Franklin D. Roosevelt's uh, first inauguration in 1933, uh, as well as um, uh, Lyndon B. Johnson's inauguration. And uh, there was a Saturn moon conjunction at that time, but it, there was, again, this is Saturn and Aquarius, and there was something, um, there was something going on about this. This is again, a further, I did some research around this and um, uh, those two I found in particular uh, play, there's something, there's a connection there astrologically to, um, to this. Now, 1941 is also interesting because Saturn and Jupiter were in conjunction in Taurus and um, they were squaring Pluto. Uh, and as we can see, that was that was the lead up to the uh, well. That was for for the U.S. World War II was uh, about to happen, but Europe was already definitely uh, heavily involved in it by then. So again, this was a video that we were going to do uh, more work on, but I just wanted to have a, a couple of slides here for folks. Okay, so in February of 2021, um, look at this. This circled here on the right hand side of your screen. Look at all of that. You've got the sun, Mercury, moon, Jupiter, Venus, and Saturn, all in Aquarius. Fortunately, uh, Pluto is only, uh, Pluto is 11 degrees away from Saturn. So it really doesn't have as much influence. It doesn't mean that there isn't any, uh, but it's, it's definitely lessened in comparison to um, 2020. Now, in Richard Tarnas's work, uh, Richard Tarnas wrote a book called Cosmos and Psyche. He, in part, uses 15 degree orbs when he's talking about conjunction squares and oppositions. So that's something to keep in mind that um, some of his research and what it brought forth, which is an, it's really an amazing book. Uh, you know, and in there, what's interesting is that he doesn't talk too much about the Saturn Uranus relationship, uh, but he talks a lot about the other outer planets and their relationship to each other. Uh, so this is a time, really all of February is a time to watch, uh, uh, you know, starting, this is, this period starts really in, uh, you know, the last um, second half of January through, through most of uh, February. 
And you can see it squares uh, Uranus and Mars still in Taurus here. So this, this is, there's definitely a lot of activity still going on this winter and really bears watching um, as we get there. Now on February 17th, just six days later, that's when that first Uranus Pluto, sorry, Uranus uh, Saturn square takes place. So you can see they're only about a half a degree from the actual square uh, as of that, uh, this February uh, 10th date here. Okay, so this is uh, the widening of the orb is taking place. This is something I talked about in the last video. Um, this is one of the major reasons why I feel there is uh, what we call an improvement happening in the sense of uh, what people will feel around the, the platonic nature uh, around its connection to Saturn and Jupiter. So Pluto's still in the ball game, very, very much so in 2021 and beyond, but it's just that it's not, I don't think it's as, in, it won't be felt as intensely as, as it was in uh, 2020. So widening the orm will have some greater clear, will have some greater clarity around our experience, especially with, with Aquarius. Because you can see here on December 28, 2020, Saturn moved beyond seven degrees and Jupiter beyond eight degrees of Pluto. Uh, Saturn does get back within about um, seven or eight degrees uh, roughly in 2021 of, um, uh, Pluto, but it never gets it never gets back into any uh, real close um, uh, connections with it. All right, so we have uh, two eclipses in the spring or May and June here in uh, in the world. Uh, this is the first one is on uh, May 26, uh, 2021, and that takes place in the sign of uh, the moon is in the sign of uh, Sagittarius. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Sagittarius and the sun is in Gemini. So um, as you can see, this takes place near the star Antares, one of the four uh, royal stars and right really a lot closer to the northern claw of the scorpion. The scorpion is a uh, uh, one of the guardians of the uh, galactic center um, where souls go to go through the golden gate to be uh, rebirthed in some fashion into the next uh, lifetime or incarnation, whatever that might be. Uh, this eclipse is visible in Eastern Asia, um, uh, Australia, North and South America, and all of the Pacific Ocean. Uh, so, and it, this lunar eclipse is total. Then we have an annular solar eclipse at uh, 19 degrees, 47 minutes Gemini. This takes place uh, in the uh, bowl constellation here. And these, again, solar eclipses, a total, especially total and annular ones are uh, portals, portals into the next, um, uh, you know, to, into the higher state, into the ethereal, into the celestial realm. It's either also can be looked at as like a super new moon where there's a, just a, a, a much higher octave of the, the experience of the new moon, which can be looked at as a place of a, a new beginning, new start. Um, this is, is, as it takes place in uh, symbolically in the Nana's goddess and Nana's great bull of heaven, um, you know, this could be a, a certainly a connection to uh, the greater feminine and a, and a point of, of us being able to, uh, to see another perspective of the loss of what was once, uh, you know, over 4,000 years ago a more matriarchal, a matrilineal societies to that moved into a patriarchy and a patrilineal society. So this is perhaps a chance to tune into that uh, that space. And this um, const this uh, eclipse uh, is not visible to many. It's my, mainly in the Arctic, uh, eastern uh, eastern Russia and northeastern uh, Canada, as well as part of Greenland. So you're, not many people are, are up in that area, although it does go over uh, some part just south of Hudson Bay, close to one of the, uh, to the Great Lakes area of the, U of the US and Canada border. But it does, like I said, you'd have to do some, a lot of people would have to do some traveling to be able to, to see this annular eclipse. Uh, okay. Oops. Ah, 
here we go. We're going to get into the Pluto return here. And um, this is uh, um, this is something that I'd probably want to do an entire video just about. Um, so the US, when the US was forged, uh, was manifested in 1776 uh, on July 4th, Pluto was in the sign of Capricorn at 27 degrees, 33 minutes. Uh, so every sign is 30 degrees and Pluto was, was in the latter part of that sign. Um, and so Pluto in 2021 gets to uh, almost 27 degrees. It gets to 26 degrees and 48 minutes before it goes retrograde uh, on April 26 slash 27th of 2021. And um, in shamanic astrology, we use a one degree orb for uh, outer planet uh, transit uh, cycles or what we like to call initiations. That means if the outer planet gets within one degree of a, say, someone's personal planet, like say the moon or the sun, then that uh, you know on a on a basic level starts the cycle. Now there are other rules around uh, you know certain retrograde loops and so forth, uh, but I I don't necessarily need to to get into that at this point. So if we use that measurement, the cycle wouldn't really start until uh, March twenty fifth, twenty twenty one. But since we're looking at a Pluto return, which only happens once every 240 odd years for anything, we can widen, I feel like we can widen the orb here, especially after what we've seen in 2020. If that isn't the start of the Pluto return, I don't know what is uh, for the United States. Uh, but Pluto got within two and a half degrees of the US natal Pluto in March and April of 2020. Um, of the, so this, great plutonic initiation started really. And we'll go on, uh, if we use that two and a half degree measurement, we'll go on until 2024, when uh, right at the point when uh, Pluto uh, ingresses into the sign of Aquarius for the first time. And so that is the, uh, that is the main, uh, uh, the bulk of these years. It's like a four to five year period here, uh, roughly four and a half year period of, of uh, what we might want, want to use, maybe 2021 and 2020 to 2023. Maybe that's the, the, con the more concentrated center point of the Pluto return, but we are in that space now, especially when uh, Saturn and Jupiter joined uh, Pluto in 2020. All right, so other things about this uh, that we can, uh, some astrologers might use the Pluto uh, um, return measurement when Pluto entered the sign of Capricorn, which happened back in 2008. And we all know in 2008 that it was the economic breakdown in, in the world. Uh, financial systems were collapsing. A lot of banks went bankrupt uh, due to the housing market uh, collapsing. So this is, in, in summary, here's some bullet points. It's a, it's a, it's a time of great composting. And Capricorn is a sign of systems and structures, um, planting the seeds for a strong foundation in the long term. And Pluto is a sort of an, uh, uh, looking deep into the shadow, into the soul of those systems and structures and showing where, hey, it's not about uh, trying to uh, just maintain the status quo. This is about, this is an irrational process that it's, it, the time is up, so to speak, for things to be uh, rebirthed and composting to take place. It doesn't mean to throw everything out the window here, but it's more like really going into it and, and intentionally desiring to uh, uh, work with uh, detoxifying, uh, you know, corruption, detoxifying the uh, financial and economic and social systems and health systems that you know, are just either broken, no longer uh, work very well, or whatever that might be, it's, it's time for a renewal of them. But at the same time that that happens, our seeds are planted during this time for an improved, or at least a, a system that is, you might say, the, um, 
that can operate more holistically and maybe greater in the long term, more in harmony with our relationship to the earth and, and uh, our, our own enlightenment journey. Um, and this could also be the uh, storm before the calm. So as we surrender to our, on a collective level, to the fears around our uh, material world, um, you know, that, that, that surrender gets us to a place where we can be open to what needs to change, what needs to be transformed. And yeah, transformation is not an easy process. It's actually a lot of times a very painful and uncomfortable process, but we're, we're, deep, we're deep in it now. And uh, this is not a place where we can just ignore it and try to carry on the business as usual, that it, the, the, the deeper realities in our face and uh, it's time to continue to face that. And if we can, uh, if we can work together, if we can co-create together, we can work with it, you know, and work with it consciously. This is, uh, without really making a, to saying it's only good, this is as far as in harmony with humanity, absolutely. And uh, it's not about the, uh, just let's bring out the truth. Um, it's not about wild, uh, un, uh, unsupported, um, uh, conspiracies, uh, you know, that uh, have, uh, that hold no water, uh, and just ignoring your own responsibility to yourself and projecting out your ills and issues into the world and formulating these complex uh, theories that uh, in order to explain uh, feelings that you're having, um, it's best to, to face the reality, to surrender into yourself so that you can experience what really needs to happen within, within your own inner truth and what your soul wants. And um, every, if, 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 if many of us do that, then this world would definitely be a, a more livable place than, than what it is right at this moment. Okay, so we also have uh, these uh, aspects that I wanna comment on that also provide, th there's more information about this in my Vesta and Virgo video. Um, but I'll just, as part of the 2021 experience, I'm throwing these in here. There's three Vesta squares with the lunar nodes, uh, December 30th, which just at the end of the year of 2020. And then there's one in February and one in May in 2021. Uh, Vesta's in Virgo, Neptune is in Pisces. Uh, and then of course the lunar nodes are in Gemini and Sagittarius. Uh, Neptune squares the lunar nodes. Um, in, um, in fact, the lunar nodes actually transition at the end of 2021 into new signs. And we'll, that's something that will be a separate video for. I couldn't include everything in here, but Neptune squares the lunar nodes once uh, during this passage uh, on January uh, 26. So that's something like, uh, you know, this is to me in service to spirit. This is something about truth and meaning and you might say spiritual uh, heart-centered healing and connection to uh, sort of the celestial realm, but also in being able to uh, open up to uh, be able to see things from a different angle, a different experience, and maybe even uh, a contrarian type of uh, uh, feel to it. So we can, you can add that into um, to the themes that I've been talking about already. Okay, so here's the Vesta Neptune dance. Um, the first one took place December 20th, 2020. That was at 18 degrees uh, Virgo Pisces. February 9th, 2021, Virgo Pisces at uh, 19 degrees, 33 minutes. And then July 2nd, 2021 at 23 degrees uh, Virgo Pisces. Um, on March 4th, 2021, it starts an entirely new Virgo, what we call Overtown. And I use the Vesta Sun opposition for the start of that cycle. Uh, and that is uh, that's when Vesta comes in and actually can be visible to the naked eye in under, under really dark skies. Now, not every opposition, Vesta becomes visible. In fact, this coming one is, is, is going to be very difficult to see in comparison to other ones. So I'd have to look uh, in the future to see what other ones may be visible in the future. Uh, but March 4th is that time. And so for those people that have, like all these signs that I'm mentioning, the early degrees of Aquarius, uh, Taurus, and um, uh, Pisces, and, and now Virgo, if you've got 
personal points in these areas, you're also in and experiencing some very powerful personal cycles for yourself. So, you know, something to keep in mind as, as we go forward here. Uh, Mercury retrogrades in 2021, we have three, Aquari and they're all air signs. So Jupiter, um, uh, Saturn in air sign conjunction at the end of, uh, in December, 2020. And then we have uh, three Mercury retrogrades in Aquarius, Gemini and Libra, one January 30th through February 20th, the other May 29th through June 22nd, and the last one between September 26th and October 18th, and that's in Libra. Uh, so retrogrades are just simply a, a connection and a sort of a um, enforcement of the particular sign, a concentration of that, but also uh, opens up more creative enterprises. It's not a, it's not a rash, tends to be not a rational process, but a, a more a nonlinear process uh, with a Mercury retrograde. So, you know, yeah, there's a common knowledge that technology and Mercury retrograde aren't exactly best of bedfellows, but in the, you can utilize that time just to be, keep aware of that. It doesn't mean you can't make commitments during that time. In fact, as an example, I like to share this. The very first website that I created for myself, my astrology practice was in 2011. And I intentionally did it on the first day that Mercury stationed retrograde. And so, and I've, it, ha it didn't cause any difficulties. I honored Mercury actually. And you could do that for yourself in your own life by setting an intention. And so that was something that I wanted to connect into and, and uh, you might say uh, have a, um, uh, uh, a resonant relationship with Mercury as I did that. Another part that's come in is this Mars Venus. Um, we didn't have any conjunctions in uh, with Mars Venus in um, uh, 2020, but here we have this uh, happening um, in July. On July 13, 2021, there is a Mars Venus conjunction in the early evening sky. It takes place almost at 20 degrees Leo just between the crab and the lion constellations. There's also, at the time of that conjunction, there's a waxing crescent moon that goes into conjunction with them the day before and will be there also the day after. So that whole mid-July period is gonna be really interesting with that relationship there. Really something to look out and, and connect in the night sky for. So between late June and late July of 2021, Mars and Venus will be highly prominent in the west northwestern sky after sunset. The potent connection in the sign of Leo activates radical radiant self-love and the creator matrix and alchemy of both the masculine and feminine principles. This could be a wild conjunction, archetypally speaking. Perhaps there be a resonant agreement, something that comes forth, some kind of, uh, you know, vision, uh, you know, uh, that can, uh, uh, of enlightenment or a vision of, of, you know, brightness uh, that can come through Leo into the relationship between the Mars, between the masculine and the feminine principles and their relationship to each other in July. So let's, you know, cross our fingers around this but I, I, I find that really fascinating that that's, uh, that's happening there. Um, here's, the, here's what they look like in the sky in the early evening time. You can see uh, the moon not far. Uh, in fact, the moon will be um, relatively close uh, the day before next to Mars and Venus. And then between them, we have the star, the heartbeat of the Lion constellation is Regulus at zero degrees, sitting at zero degrees Virgo. Uh, so, you know, we can see it's only about 11 degrees away. So kind of in a, from a celestial point of view, they are very close on the outside to a conjunction there. And uh, this, this, this lion uh, really connects to, uh, to the mysteries of the Sphinx and uh, also the one that was constructed uh, in Egypt was uh, inspired by this particular constellation. Uh, and there's some certainly some controversy around when it was built, uh, but there are some in, uh, 
uh, you might say indications that it was built much thousands of years earlier than um, what uh, is, is conventionally known. Uh, and that's a topic for in a completely another day. Um, so think about the Sphinx and, and this Mars and Venus conjunction, and then both of those planets will be going over the Lion constellation the rest of July and into, into August. All right, so then we have a no, November, December eclipse season, uh, November 18th, 19th, we have a partial lunar eclipse at uh, 27, 14, uh, Scorpio and Taurus. So the sun will be in Scorpio and uh, the moon will be in Taurus at that time. This is visible in most of Asia and the Americas, Australia and the Pacific Ocean, as well as Northern Europe. Uh, this is a uh, eclipse that's connecting to um, uh, the uh, area that's, in fact, the moon will be very close to uh, the uh, Pleiades, a star cluster which is a really powerful uh, uh, celestial point that's connected to the sacred hoop of the Lakota sacred hoop of stars and cultures throughout the globe for many thousands of years have always connected to this, the, the seven sisters or brothers. And um, there's been a research that's been done that there, there, there used to be a star that moved to, uh, that used to be um, uh, more separated from Alcyon that at, ended up blending in with Alcyon. So that's why it looks like there's only six main stars when there used to be seven. That's an article I, I, I probably link up to it a few, maybe a future of, of my own articles about that alignment. Maybe when I write about this eclipse uh, come fall of tw or um, November uh, uh, 2021, we can, we can get into that. Uh, and then we have a total solar eclipse, December 3rd, 4th. 2021, depending on where you are in the globe. Uh, this is only visible in Antarctica and the Southern Ocean. So those people that are stationed down there, uh, you know, year round, uh, perhaps, or actually December to be summer, or close to summer down there. So there'll be people may be able to uh, witness that eclipse, uh, which takes place right close to the star Antares, which is the heart of the scorpion. So, uh, so we have here a, uh, you know, a powerful star that was a, uh, one of the royal stars, uh, including uh, the one I just shared about with, uh, with Regulus, one of the royal star, four royal stars. So we have them very prominently featured again uh, in 2021 here. And, um, uh, you know, they are, uh, were markers of the, of, the, of the great directions. And again, just like, um, uh, uh, just like Pleiades, the royal stars uh, meant something to uh, most cultures, if not all cultures, uh, over thousands of years and their connection to their own, um, you know, uh, celestial visioning and their um, uh, spirituality. Uh, so they were really, really vital. Okay, we're getting close to the end of this 2021. Again, I'm not highlighting everything about 2021 but at the end of the year excuse me at the end of the year on december 19 2021 venus is nearing the end of its synodic cycle and when it does that it stations retrograde that means uh, venus is catching up with the orbit of earth and it's doing this in the latter degrees of capricorn so on the bottom of your screen you can see here venus and pluto only about a degree apart and Venus will uh, station retrograde. It'll, it'll have actually three conjunctions. Uh, it's, it's, it already had one conjunction that is a past it uh, prior to this, uh, just a few days before that. And now it's gonna retrograde back over it at the end of December. And then uh, the, in January, it'll, um, it'll go direct and, and it'll start to move um, uh, you know, over uh, Pluto again. In, uh, in 2022. So you can see that line up there in the evening sky. Um, uh, and you see Mercury here be barely visible um, and then Venus and Saturn and uh, also Jupiter where all those planets will be uh, technically all visible in the, um, uh, during, that, during that night, but also the second half of uh, 
you know, well, really all of December, I would say. Now I'd have to check Mercury to see how visible it is that whole month because it moves fairly quickly in comparison to others. So what does this mean? This is just that uh, I, I look at this as Venus is help activating the, uh, the feminine's relationship to the underworld and how its connection to the earth and the knowledge, the uh, sort of the, um, uh, the maternal and or uh, 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 matriarchal knowledge that's buried, literally buried in the earth and going underworld, going underneath that, um, not from a place of like book knowledge, but from a place of like, what, what, was, what were our original instructions? What were the original visions, the, the, uh, the original uh, things that were uh, created? How can we go under that and connect to the feminine's uh, perspective, perspective of that and their own energy around the systems that were created and their relation, especially their relationship to the earth. Um, and it could bring up and, and underneath that, what was the shadow and how can we transform that? Um, the pain, uh, the, um, the, this, the discomfort, maybe that maybe something was, you know, the kind of acute sense that they, we were missing part of that knowledge. Maybe this can help us bring back and open up that knowledge at the end of uh, 2021 and into 2022. Maybe there's something, something to be revealed, uh, some seeds that planted that will help us uh, move even beyond this, uh, you know, uh, you might say Aquarius and uh, into this, uh, this Capricorn, uh, Capricorn experience uh, around the feminine, the grandmother wisdom that can come forth and be, be honored more fully uh, so, uh, you know, we know that Kamala Harris will be the vice president, um, as an example in the United States, maybe there's something, maybe there's something there around that, uh, that could show up in, uh, uh late 2021 or early 2022. Uh, that's just one, uh, hypothetical, not a, uh, as an example, but maybe other, uh, feminine, uh, you know, wisdom and elder carriers, um, that can, that can show up and, um, you know, we are take them seriously and say, hey, there's a there's something important here to be revealed and we got to look at our own inner truth and surrender to that. OK, so. This has been, um, you know, a uh, uh, thing that I. Um, uh, will um, uh, finish off here, this 2021 experience and. Throughout 2021, I'll have uh, other videos that will go concentrate into some of these areas like the Pluto return, uh, the eclipses, um, the Mars Venus uh, conjunction, and uh, you know, perhaps we'll, uh, I'll, and with Kaylin, I'll do a, Castell, I'll do a uh, inauguration video that, that maybe goes into some more depth than what I did. But I wanted to comment on that just to show that uh, we, we were, that that was really something really special that was uh, occurring here. But I just wanna thank you all uh, and wish you all a happy 2021. And uh, I wish you all peace and um, you know, that, that, it, that it rains through us and, and um, we experience this, um, this new Aquarius energy from a, a more universal uh, humanitarian perspective where we also have breakthroughs, but the breakthroughs that are here to be of support to us rather than just simply an experimentation and um, are not healthy. So let's, uh, let's connect on that level and uh, set our vision uh, forth in a few days. We have um, January 4th is um, a time when um, the sun and Sirius go into opposition every, at the beginning of every calendar year. This happens anywhere between the 2nd and the 4th of January. So Sirius is going to be really prominent. And that's maybe we'll look at that star. That's the star of what, where we've been as a solar system, the star that the, that the sun is moving away from. So we can, we can look at that as, as, hey, that's where we've been. And we can look at that, that, that past. And um, opposite that is um, Vega. And that's in the northern sky. That's where the solar system is moving toward. That was an entire, that would be an entirely different uh, topic, but I wanted to share those thoughts at the end and wish you all again a happy 2021. And, um, you know, uh, this, we just uh, pray and uh, set an intention for, for more peace rather than uh, for a violent action. So um, be well, everyone, dream well, and uh, look up into the sky. Thank you all.